Now what I'm going to do with this video, because this ape, start to finish, takes me about 40 minutes to an hour to paint this guy start to finish. Now this does include drying time, so what I'm going to do is, even though I'm going to sit here and I'm going to paint this guy, I'm going to shortcut some of this footage so you don't have to spend 10 minutes watching me apply contrast paint to, the, to this ape. Now the contrast paint, usually you want to put it on fairly thick so you can see I get a lot of dripping everywhere and stuff. And the big thing is just make sure you cover, cover all the white spaces. That's, that's all you really need to do. And contrast paint goes on super easy. Don't be afraid to use more. And it, it's going to look better. The more you apply, the better it's going to look. Trust me. So I liberally put quite a bit on there. And throughout the painting process, I'm usually going to go back and add just a little bit more. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. I'm going to jump ahead about 15 minutes here. And then we're going to show you the ape with the entire first coat applied. Welcome back to another episode of The Mystic Arts. I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, and today I'll be painting Nolzer's Giant Ape. And what I like about the Nolzer's line is, again, if you don't know, they're all pre-primed, ready to go right out of the box. And the detail on these guys is pretty sharp. I really like them. And they always come with a base, although sometimes with these big ones, I don't feel the need to put the base on, but I will once I'm done painting this guy. Now I'm going to try to use exclusively contrast paints to paint this guy and I think it's going to work really well for him because it's going to cover a lot of area fast and I'm, today I'm going to use the Contrast Wildwood. I haven't really used this one before but I'm hoping it comes out pretty good and then I'm going to highlight the chest and hands with the Eschen Gray. So I'm going to get started here. I'm going to shake me up some of the Contrast Wildwood here and get going. Okay, so I'm going to cut the footage again after I let him dry for a little while, probably about 30 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes, and boom, here he is. He's nice and dry. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and put him on the large painting handle by Citadel. And what's nice is even though this base is uneven, these painting handles still hold him no problem. All right, now let's take a look at him. So since he's all dry, and I can see there's a couple of white spots that I might have to touch up, but I thought about using some of that gray. Oh crap, what am I doing here? Okay, so now I've jumped forward and actually it only took me about eight minutes to really get a good coat on him and I wasn't even rushing. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put him in one of these Citadel painting handles to kind of help me out a little bit. Plus also I'm going to be painting the base. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using another contrast paint this time. Let's see, I'm going to use, oh, let me move him out of the way. Basilicum Gray, and I'm going to just take a, take a chance and see how it looks on the base. I got kind of an idea that maybe he's going to be standing on some rocks, you know, like at the base of, I don't know, the base of a plateau or something like that, and we'll see how that turns out. We'll go ahead and uh, clean my brush out here and shake up some paint, and we're going to start applying some Basilicum Gray. And now I could, I thought about using a cool texture paint, because those are pretty cool, but I think I'm just going to try this and see what happens. Because again, I just want to try this with mostly contrast and see what happens, see how many paints I can get away with. And uh, so far it's going on pretty good. Seems a little dark, but we'll see how it dries. And let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this just a little bit and see where we're at. Okay, I just skipped over a minute or two, and I've got the entire base painted already, so it's starting to dry. It's gonna, I think it's going to have a really nice gray, stony-looking texture and color to it. I think it's going to be really good. And while I let that dry a little bit, because I think I got an idea, I think I want to put a different color on that base to help it stand out a little more. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some touch-up on him, because as you can see from this angle, see on his chest, his arm, that there are some white spots and I kind of want to cover those up so I'm going to get another I'm going to open up my contrast paint again and I'm going to clean off my brush and get some contrast paint and touch up some of these spots and when I'm painting I'm, I'm never too worried about making it perfect the first time because you can always add more paint it's just 
you can never take it away or if you can take away paint it's a it's a lot more difficult to do so I'm just gonna go through and hit some of these spots I think I need to fix up and I'm gonna go ahead and while I do that I'm gonna skip over the two or three minutes it takes me to find all the spots and touch them up all right so after two or three minutes I'm done touching them up and maybe add an extra coat and now I'm gonna use Eshin gray to get some of the skin areas on this great ape and I figured those areas are going to be his hands, his feet, his chest, his nose, and his ears. So I'm going to hit those areas which is the light coat of Eshin Gray and I'm not going to do much else to it. I'm just going to put it on there and however it lays, it lays. I'm not worried about it uh, you know, doing a whole lot of extra detail and I'm going to put it on reasonably light. I'm not going to try and goop too much on, try and make my paint really stretch and we're going to see how it comes out. And I think it's going to come out pretty good, so I'm not too worried about it. And remember, a little goes a long way, so I'm not gobbling a lot of paint off on him. And as you can see, a lot of times I'll go to a paper towel or something, or my brush will go off screen, and I'll dab off extra paint onto the napkin so that way I don't put too much on him. All right, and uh, I'm going to uh, see how easy it goes on. The chest is already done. I'm working on one of the hands right now. It's going to probably just take me a minute or two to get through all this. I say probably two or three minutes just to make sure I've really got everything. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so his hands, feet, chest, and uh, his ears and his nose are coming along really good. I think it looks really good. I'm pretty much done with that part. Yeah, I really like that Eshin Gray is really going to do what I want to do. And now I think I'm ready to go ahead and do some finer detail. And I want his eyes to kind of stand out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my go-to Storm Host Silver. And I'm going to dab ever so gently with a small tip brush some Storm Host Silver onto each eye. Now this can be a little tricky and uh, it can take a little bit of work to get it just right. But I've been doing it for a while and, well, practice makes perfect. Well, almost. <laughs> So I just take a fine tip brush and I'm just real careful, real slow, and I literally put just a little dab on my brush, go straight in, get a little dab on his eye, and however much gets in there, gets in there. And then I'm not gonna go back and try and mess with it because the more I try to fix a perceived mistake, a lot of times I just make things worse. So just a quick dab or two and I'm done. And already, those eyes really stand out. But since I'm not sure, I'm gonna go ahead and not worry about finishing the eyes yet because there's no reason for me to rush into it, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to start working on the mouth detail. So I'm going to jump ahead and we're going to start on that. Okay, with the mouth, I'm actually going to get in there and apply some Mephiston Red. And I'm also actually, and you may or may not see the paint in the background depending on how I cut this video, but I'm going to use some Mephiston Red to kind of get that red in there. And then because it's going to be so bright and it's going to stand out so much, I'm actually going to take a Bugman's Glow to kind of bring that bright red, kind of to bring it back down a little bit. But I do want that red in there because some of that, because with the Bugman's Glow, when I paint over it, I'm not going to paint entirely over that red. It's going to be a nice light coat, so some of that Mephiston red is going to come through, and it's still going to kind of show through, and it's going to give me that nice pinky pout look, uh, at least for me anyways. I think it's going to work pretty good, and we'll see how it works out here in just a few minutes. And this, uh, this is probably only going to take me, I don't know, this could take me about, about four or five minutes to do. It's really not too long at all. The hardest part about this is, and especially in smaller figures, is getting your brush down in there and not overpainting too much to where you got to go back and make corrections. So sometimes if I think I'm in danger of overpainting, I just won't. And then I'll wait until the model's completely done to see if I need to go back in there and touch up just a little bit because I'd rather paint less and realize that it's okay versus trying to fix a, mis a perceived mistake, overpaint, and then realize I gotta go back and fix it because I did too much, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit and we'll see how it comes out. Let me fast forward my work. Again, probably take about uh, three or four minutes here. Okay, here you see I've applied some of the Bugman's Glow and that kind of dulled down that red palette he had. And now, for a final touch inside the mouth, I'm actually gonna take just the littlest bit of the 
technical blood for the blood god and put it in there just a little bit so it retains that wet look. I'm not going for gore factor, but I'm going to use it just enough to retain that wet look. Let's uh, fast forward and see how this comes out. Well, actually, let's uh, take a look right here. I'm getting ready to put the brush to it and just a little bit to give me some of that wet look. Let's see. There we go. Again, a little bit goes a long way, and I'm just adding it where I think I need to, and it uh, looks pretty good. I might uh, spread it out a little bit, kind of thin out what I've got, and let some of the undercolor shine through. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, this building up the layers is really nice, and uh, it's pretty simple, too. Let's uh, skip ahead and see how it comes out. So far, so good. I like it. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit the teeth with some... Uh, Tyrant Skull. It's a dry paint and it's nice because uh, when I dip my brush in the Tyrant Skull, I'm not getting too much on it. I'm going to have a very minimal amount on the brush and I'm just going to go and I'm just going to real quick hit his teeth and I'm not going to put a lot of effort, just a, the littlest touch here and there. I don't have to completely cover the tooth. I don't have to make sure that I've got every single side of the tooth. Just enough paint on there to give a hint that there's teeth there, there's fangs, and you can see a little bit goes a long way on this guy. It doesn't take me much effort at all. And we're going to go ahead and get this top row here. There we go. See how it just, just a couple gentle strokes, and I'm not trying hard to get the teeth colored all the way down to where the teeth meet the gums. I, I'm not trying that hard. I'm just just the lightest little bit, and again, a little goes a long way. Okay, and after literally another minute of painting, I added just a little bit more of that Tyrant Skull to the teeth, and it comes out looking really good. I really like it. And again, I'm just, I'm just barely hitting the teeth. I'm not trying too hard. I'm just taking my time. That's why it takes me so long. Just two minutes on the teeth, hitting it gently with that Tyrant Skull, coming out looking pretty good. Now let's uh, move on to the next part. All right, I'm gonna go back to the base, and this time I'm gonna use another contrast paint, Warp Lightning. And when I paint, I love to bounce around because I think if I focus too much on any one thing, it's too easy for me to make a mistake. So now I'm gonna take this Warp Lightning, I'm gonna put a liberal amount on my brush, and the whole idea is, I've been thinking about it while I've been doing this paint job, and what I want to do is I don't want just a rocky base. I want to make it a little more interesting, but without using textures. So I'm going to take the Warp Lightning, and I'm going to use it as kind of like a, like a moss. So I'm going to use it, I'm going to get that contrast paint on there, and then I'm going to spread it out. And I'm going to kind of thin it out and make sure it doesn't look like paint on there, like I just dropped the big splotch of paint and left it, so I'm really going to try and thin it out. Now this is one of the times where I would recommend thinning out a contrast paint, and I don't mean thinning it by adding water, I mean just taking the paint, getting some on your brush, and then when you're painting it, just try to thin it out by painting it as much as possible, and then it looks like just this subtle green that's on there, that like it's a moss or something like that, it's a stain. And that's what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to kind of stain this base with that green in certain spots. And what I think I might do is I'm probably going to add some kind of water effect to it. And uh, let's skip ahead and see how this comes out. Okay, after applying the warp lighting and letting it dry, I really like how it came out. It has that moss effect that I was looking for. At least for me, it's exactly what I wanted, and I'm very, very happy with the result. And I'm going to go ahead and add that water effect. So maybe he's like at the base of a waterfall or something like that. And that's why the moss is there because the water's flowing down. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use, again, another technical. I love these technicals. I talk about them all the time. And I'm going to use Soul Stone Blue. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the green. But this time with the Soul Stone Blue, instead of being real thin with it, I'm going to make sure I'm going to apply it real heavily to the base. But I don't want to cover the whole base. I want to want to make it look like the water's been splashing and pooling up. So we're going to kind of just paint that in some spots here. We'll just kind of take my time. And uh, with this one, I really want to make sure I get a lot of paint in a small area. Yeah, see, we're going to fast forward a little bit here, I think, here in just a second. Uh, I'm going to find some more low spots. 
that's my objective. All right, let's fast forward and take a look at it once I've applied some of this. And again, it's probably gonna take me about four or five minutes to get it just the way I want it. Okay, now I'm done. Again, it took me about three or four minutes to apply that Soul Stone Blue. And I applied it in some low areas and areas that just kind of felt right. I alternated it with the moss and I didn't cover all of the gray stone underneath. I want to have a mix of all the colors. And I gotta tell you, it really come out looking good. I'm really pleased with it. And another thing that's really cool is that Soul Stone Blue, when it dries, it's gonna dry and still have that wet look to it. And that's what I think is really cool. It's gonna look like it's fresh, like there's really water there. And of course, me being me, now I'm gonna change and I'm gonna use some Spirit, oh, I'm sorry, Spirit Stone Red. For some reason I thought it was Soul Stone Red, but I'm gonna use Spirit Stone Red and this time I'm going to go back and I am going to hit the eyes with it just a little bit. Of course, I'm real happy with the silver and I'm always worried that I'm going to mess it up. But I know this is a tried and true technique and I've used it before and I know it comes out good. So I'm pretty confident with it. The only thing is I just got to be real steady when I apply it. And we're going to get in there and do it. It always makes me nervous going back and doing something like this because... I feel like, oh, I got it right once, and I, I'm afraid that if I try it again, I'm going to get it wrong. But, nope, as luck would have it, it's not too bad. Plus, I hold the model with both my hands, and I'm resting the brush on my finger, and I'm really, really taking my time and make sure I get this right. And I am really happy with the result. Just a couple quick little dabs, and I am done with the eyes, and ooh, man. Look at that, red and angry. He's ready to fight. Look at that rage. Man, I am super excited with this guy. And I gotta tell you, I'm very, very happy with how he turned out. And honestly, out of a 40 minute video, half the time is just waiting for the paint to dry. And that's the big thing. And when I'm working with a model, you know, I'll work on one spot, I'll let it dry while I'm working on another spot, Sometimes I'll start painting when something's wet, but I really try not to do that just because we're about colors bleeding into each other and everything. But uh, man, this thing is great. If you don't have one of these, it's super fun to paint. And I surely, in your D&D campaign, you can find a reason to have one of these giant apes. I'm even thinking about doing a fun conversion, about doing a grape ape from uh, way back, a Hanna-Barbera cartoon using one of these models. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it, but I might, especially if I get some uh, comments on it, maybe I'll be harassed into doing it. Well, again, man, I sure appreciate you stopping by here at the Mystics Ar Mystic Arts and watching me do some painting. And I hope you enjoyed it. I maybe hope you learned something. And just remember, man, anything that I can do here, you can do just as well. And quite frankly, probably better because you'll probably actually have more time than me to do this kind of stuff again contrast paints are your friend technical paints are your friend use them man so again i'm dave hunt owner of game masters guild telling you to stay safe play great games and i'll see you real soon okay and now i want to look over the final product and really kind of show them off to you look at how he came out at this point, he is completely dry. Look at how his fur is shaded, the gray on his hands and his feet coming out standing. Looks like I've got all the white spots. The teeth, you can see from a mile away, they really stand out in that mouth. He's roaring, he's angry. Look at those eyes, man, those eyes. And what's nice is his eyes are so far back in his head. Man, it creates a darkness and a shadow and it they really pop and I'm really happy with the, how the base turned out too. It's really exactly what I wanted. I'm very, very excited, very pleased. And of course it took a few different technicals and a couple contrast paints, but this really did not take any time at all. Um, honestly, this probably would have been about f a 40 minute video if you'd actually watched me start to finish.